Hey everyone, thank you for checking out our YouTube page. Today I'm going to teach you how to do a bunch of stuff with the latest version of Final Cut Pro. Uh, but first, let's check out the video we'll be making. Okay, so we're going to be taking a couple of pictures, prepping them for animation in Photoshop bringing them into Final Cut Pro and transforming the pictures and giving them some simple keyframe animations. We're also going to throw in some text and generator images since the latest update moved those into kind of a weird spot. So the first thing I got to do is prepare my pictures in Photoshop so that they're a little bit easier to animate with. So I've got my finder over here and I'm going to use this coconut and this little drawing of a tiger guy. So first I'm going to Skype with Photoshop and we're just gonna select the background and get rid of that and then chop this guy in half so we'll have two halves that we can animate. So I just use the quick selection tool and click all the white and I'm going to select the inverse and throw a mask on there. And I'm gonna duplicate the layer so that we can cut the one in half and I'll make sure my mask is selected go to my brush tool and I'm going to bring down a guide just so that I'm going to cut in the half. Oh, let's hide that guy. That's what I want. So that one's good. And I'll jump down and do the bottom half one. Select the right mask. And that'll be okay. So now I'm just going to save these as PNGs. That way uh, there's not going to be any background to the image and it'll be a lot easier to animate with. So I've already done that. I've got um, a PNG for each layer. I can see I've got it coconut bottom and coconut top. And so I'm not going to save that again. And I'll jump over and I'll show you how I did the tiger guy. And just really quick, uh, I just went in with the selection tool and selected all the white, a little bit of the black on the edge, and let's get that part in there. Select inverse, add the mask, and no background. And I would do the same, save this as a PNG. And once those are all done, you're ready to jump into Final Cut Pro and start animating them. Okay, so now that I got all my pictures prepped, I've brought them into Final Cut Pro and I'm ready to start making that video. So the first thing I want to do is throw in my background so I can start layering all the pictures on top of it the way I want. So I'm just going to go with this kind of tropical flower kind of deal and let's set that to 30 frames per second and hit OK. And let's make this guy 10 seconds. And that's cool. There we go. Okay, so it's not quite the right aspect ratio as the screen, so I'm going to select the background and come over to this little box here and hit transform. And that's going to give us those little bubbles that we can click and drag, and we're just going to scale that until it fills the whole frame. And hit done. Next we are going to come in and grab our coconuts and our tiger guy and stack those the way we want so that they're going to hide the tiger guy until we want to reveal him. So we're going to put him on the bottom because it's basically going to read from the top down. So there we go, he's got a coconut head now I guess. And let's drag that, oh come on. Drag these guys out for the duration of the video. Okay, so now we're ready to start animating. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. There we go. So I want these coconuts to be just a little bit bigger. So if you click on the layer, it's going to bring up a whole bunch of properties for that clip. So we're going to go to transform and I just want to scale this up. Uh, sure, let's try and do 140. That's good. And then I'll come over to the other coconut and make sure that one's the same. And so this top coconut, I want it to kind of rotate and pivot off of this right edge. But if I rotate it now, 
it's just kind of going off of the center because that's where the anchor point's at. So I'll set that rotation back to zero and I'm gonna select that top guy and hit that transform button and that'll show us where that anchor point is. And now in the inspector panel, I'll be able to go over to the anchor point and just kind of slide that until the anchor point's where I want. And that should be good. I'll throw that guy back in the center. That yeah, looks close enough. And hit done. So now to start animating, we're still going to be working in this inspector panel, but where I was changing all these properties, there's a little diamond guy over here, and those are your keyframes. So when you want to lock in a property uh, for a moment in time that you want to adjust later, so I know I want to rotate this top part of the coconut, I'm going to come to the very start, and I'm going to click on that diamond for rotate. That's telling it, remember this point in time, because I'm going to change it later. And then I'm going to move the playhead forward, about a second should be fine. And now I'm going to change that rotation. And yeah, sure, that'll be okay. And you can see it's already put in another keyframe. So if I click in here, oh, come on. It'll give me these little arrows that'll show me um, I can jump back to the latest keyframe or I can jump back to the previous key keyframe. And that's how you can kind of double check to make sure you actually entered in the keyframes. And then we can bring our playhead to the beginning, hit play, and see how it animates. So, not bad. Um, now we're ready to make our tiger guy kind of pop out of the coconut. So right now he is already uh, way too low, so let's bring him about here and let's make him a little bit shorter too. There we go. So for this one, it might actually be easier to work from the end and go towards the beginning. So right about here, I want them to be full size. And I'll just drag him up. Oh, that's not right. There we go. Yeah, that looks about right. So I'm going to put a keyframe at its position and for his scale. And so now I'm going to go to the beginning, but just before, there we go. And I want him to be kind of hanging out more in the bottom half. And that should be okay. And let's see how that looks. Okay, I can live with that. Uh, so now it is time to throw in some text. Now the text used to hang out over here by the transitions and the filters, and since it got updated, they've now moved it over here, and it's like a tiny little icon, and once you click on it, it's going to hide all of your media that was in your event, and it's going to bring up a library of all of their text animations and generators. So to bring in some text. I'm going to go to the build in and out because I want it to have its own like preset animation coming in and this subtle one's kind of cool. Yeah sure. And I'm going to click on that and bring it in and I'm going to put it at the very top. And these should all, most of these have no background to them so you can kind of stack them on whatever footage you're working with. And I'm going to go ahead and drag that out too. That was way too far. There we go. Okay, so you can barely see it because that text is white on white. But if you double click on the text, or you can come up here, and you can edit it just like you would in Word. So I'm going to call this guy uh, Tiki Tiger T-shirts. So that font is really, really boring. Um, we can come up to this little drop down and it's got a whole bunch of preset kind of uh, fonts for you that can be pretty cool. Um, some of them are pretty bad, uh, but I kind of like this faux 30, 3D looking one. So I'll choose that guy and I'm going to bump this up so it can fill the frame a little bit more. And it's still a little bit hard to read with that white fill, so I'm going to come over to the inspector panel and go down to face. That's basically your text fill 
and I'm gonna hit show check mark that guy and let's choose I like that blue and go with that guy so in this panel there's a ton of options um, you can go in and make your own custom drop shadows glows you can add an outline um, there's a whole bunch of stuff you can do with 3d text too um, but for now I'll just kind of show you like the basics um, and that's all you got to see for that stuff um, you can also do your alignment in this window too if you want it to kind of um, have a specific look and then over here um, in this portion of the inspector uh, you can go and kind of tell it what you want to do animation wise so I really like how this text kind of flies in there but I don't want it to run away at the end I want it to, to stay up there so to get rid of that I'm gonna uncheck the build out portion and that's gonna tell it to um, get rid of the ending animation so now throughout the whole thing it's just gonna stay up there so that Oh, it looks pretty good. The only thing I have to add now is um, a generator to the background to kind of add this little bit more interest. Um, so I'm going to use these blobs. They're just some random kind of colors floating around. And I'm going to try and put this just above, there we go, just above the tropical pattern. And I'll shorten this guy up. And so if I click on that blob layer, um, I can go and play with the blend modes so that it can look a little bit better with the background behind it. So in the blend mode, I'm going to try, oh, that's weird looking. Uh, let's try multiply. Um, kind of like that one. So now it's just got a little bit more color and movement to the background throughout the video. and that's not too bad. So I've got my generator in, my text, I've done some animation, all I gotta do now is jump back to my event and throw in some music. So if you click on that clapboard, all of your media comes back up and I'll just drag this guy down. Don't know what that just did. There we go. And let's see if I eyeballed this right. I'll drag this little balloon to add the fader. And there you go. So we got to use Photoshop to prepare our pictures for animation. We got to see where the generators and the text are located and how to use them. Uh, we also got to uh, keyframe and transform some clips. So I hope you guys liked this tutorial. Uh, if I went over anything a little bit too quick, um, please come by the lab and we can give you some one-on-one -on -one, um, instruction. Please check out the rest of our videos on YouTube and we hope to see you soon. Thanks.